Hi everyone, it's a really beautiful autumnal day today. I'm getting cozy with a cup of tea and um, I felt like making a kind of chatty video uh, about productivity and my routine and things like that, which is kind of the main topic that I go to when I'm wanting to have one of these kind of chattier videos. I think because it's the main area of my life that I share with you in terms of my kind of mundane day-to-day -day life, uh, because I feel like it's probably the main area of my day-to-day -day mundane life that is actually going to be of any interest or help to you. Um, so I've been thinking again about my routine, about my schedule. I go through ups and downs, as I've talked before about uh, on the channel, I'll link those videos up above. Um, I go through ebbs and flows, and I've struggled with this for years, especially since I started my PhD, with understanding how best to schedule my own time. And if you are somebody who, who schedules your own work time, or even who is just trying to schedule in side hustle or hobbies around the rest of your life, you might find this helpful. Um, because what I have learned is that I don't necessarily function the way that some other people function and I can watch all the productivity videos on YouTube that I want and I still will not end up turning into one of those people. I am not somebody who works well if I've got a Google Calendar that is scheduled from morning to, to, to sundown. Like that just does not work for me in the slightest. I will just completely go off the rails. I will drop the plan entirely and um, completely lose the run of myself if I try to schedule myself with that much detail. So I've talked uh, in the past, I think in the last video that I made about this, I talked a bit about how I was trying to kind of pare down my routine building. Um, I realised that uh, keeping myself accountable and keeping track of what needs to get done in a kind of to-do list fashion it kind of works to me to an for me to an extent like it kind of helps to take off the pressure of having a daily routine um but to me it's not enough structure i realize that i do need a certain amount of structure in my week or i feel as if i'm a little bit too much afloat i may be too much of a spontaneous person to do that because i will just find that i go too much with how i'm feeling in the moment and I will just say yes to too many social plans. I will say yes to doing too many things that don't end up being kind of my main tasks of the week and things just get go a little bit awry. And in general, I just feel really good when I am in a kind of a phase of planning my life to an extent. Like if I am following some kind of routine, I do feel more in control and I feel better about kind of giving in to those kind of spontaneous wants and desires, uh, you know, once they kind of are operating outside of the part of my life that is controlled. So I've kind of returned to that in, in the last week or so. I definitely dropped off the wagon. I, in the last video, like I mentioned, I talked about structuring my week into just having kind of three hour blocks per day that were non-negotiable work and then kind of minimal amounts of exercise that were non-negotiable as well and kind of building off that. It wasn't a lot of building that happened because I became just so overwhelmed with packing and uh, I was sick a few times in the last kind of two to three months as well, which was kind of a problem. And um, yeah, I definitely fell off that wagon. But um, now that I'm back in Ireland and kind of trying to get back into a routine and um, really kind of setting my sights on what it is that I want to be focusing on for the next kind of year, I have been feeling very much like getting really quite strict to myself again in terms of having those limited amounts of routine in my day. So this time around what I've done instead of having just a kind of free-flowing three-hour block when I want to get kind of really focused work done, I have given myself an actual kind of timeline which is something that I am often hesitant to do because I feel like sometimes I, I rebel against that a bit and as soon as I have a conflicting meeting or a conflicting appointment, I fall off the wagon and then I kind of give up on the whole idea. But I realised that if it's too free-flowing, then I just kind of panic a bit if I feel like I've started work a little bit too late in the day and then if I feel like those three hours are all I'm going to get done in terms of productivity in, in the day, it just kind of makes me uncomfortable. So I was recently lying awake in bed trying to sleep one night and after several weeks of sort of uh, chaos and trying to unpack and trying to get kind of menial tasks done around the house, I just 
had this moment of thinking, I need to get my life in order and I need to start working on these projects to get them done as quickly as I can because I'm really looking forward to A, being able to make a little bit of money so that I can travel and do fun things like that and B, um, looking forward to getting this PhD kind of out of my hair so that I have more freedom in order to focus on the other important things that I want to do with my life, uh, like being able to earn some money. Um, and so I kind of realised, you know what, I need to start being a little bit harder on myself. And I gave myself a four hour block of work, um, six days a week from 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. with a kind of half hour break in the middle. And 10 a.m. might sound quite late to you, but my, my reasoning around that was that um, it would mean that there was no particular pressure on me, even if I had a relatively late night. For example, like even if I went to bed at like 1 a.m., I could still get up at nine and conceivably do my entire morning routine and be starting work by 10 a.m. And so I decided, you know what, like even if I'm out late, even if I have a hangover, even if I don't sleep until 2 a.m., seven hours sleep, I can get up, I can get myself moving and I can sit down at the computer and at least attempt to work by 10 a.m. And as somebody who suffers from insomnia and who, you know, anxiety and things like that, things that tend to keep me up and awake at night, it's really helpful for me to know that even if it does get quite late, I can still get up later than I usually would and be productive by my usual starting time. So that's not to say that I normally get up at 9am. I have been kind of working my uh, waking up time back and back again. Um, ideally, I kind of feel best when I get up before 8am, sometime between seven and a half. Seven is ideal for me. I haven't quite gotten myself back there yet because things have been a bit crazy. You know, I had a wedding and all this stuff was going on in my life. Um, but that's kind of my aim for right now. So that gives me a big chunk in the morning when I kind of meditate, do yoga, go for a run. The idea with that is that if I'm ready to go by nine o'clock, I can start work. I can start doing something that makes me feel like I have been productive and I've gotten something done. But I really like the idea of, say, if I'm, if I'm ready to sit down by 9 a.m., if I've, you know, gotten up at half seven and I've already kind of done yoga and meditation and gone for a run and I'm showered and dressed and ready to go, um, then I can actually say to myself, well, maybe I'll work on my novel for an hour or maybe I'll write a blog post, maybe I'll brainstorm for my next YouTube video. You know, tasks like that that seem kind of more creative and more fun because they're spontaneous. I really like the idea of potentially having the space in my morning for that kind of thing. And then when 10 a.m. rolls around, that is my time for dedicated focused work. My phone goes onto airplane mode and um, this is my time for dedicated focused work on one of two things, either my PhD, or moving towards uh, Anya Orga as a business, which is kind of my ultimate goal. I want to be able to uh, offer services and offer products under the rubric of Anya Orga. So um, at the moment, that means working on my website. So those are the two things that I am doing. One of two things, that's it, from 10 a.m. onwards. Now, sometimes I kind of have to loosen that up a little bit and oftentimes I will start um, recording a video at say 12 o'clock or one o'clock uh, rather than waiting until after the kind of 2 p.m. Uh, deadline. If I've got a meeting later on in the day or something and I just know, know that I need to get it done earlier on, like I'm okay with being kind of flexible on that to an extent. Um, but that's what the kind of six day work week is for for me and um, yeah as long as I feel like most of the days that I'm getting a solid chunk of like four hours in uh, on these kind of main tasks that need to be done then that has been making me feel much more in control of my of my life. Now, four hours might not sound like a lot, but let's be real, I have a lot of other things that need to get done outside of that. I have to, you know, edit my YouTube video, I have to reply to emails, I have to work on journal articles, I have to um, write a newsletter, I have to plan videos, I have to, um, even just simple things like going to the doctor, going shopping, doing laundry tasks like that. Um, I tend to, like to have the freedom to kind of do those other tasks in, in whatever portion of the day that feels best for me to do it in. I often kind of get a burst of creativity and energy in the evenings. And so if I want to do some work, some reading, some planning in the evenings, then I'll do that. Um, but that's what's been working really well for me at the moment. And I feel like having that expectation of myself, those kind of four hours rather than a full kind of nine to five chunk of time 
it um it makes me feel more energized than it does depleted or exhausted and um in my experience so far it's enough time for me to make good progress because those hours that I spend on the task are really focused really solid hours and um, where I'm doing really deep and and solid work and I'm not letting myself get kind of distracted and and so on I've actually done something really similar with my exercise as well I can't exactly remember what it was that I had paired my exercise back down to the last time that I made this video and um, it was substantially more I think I think it was kind of three 4k runs a week and possibly some strength training as well I can't really remember but I scaled it back even more honestly I've had such a break from running and it's been such a long time since I was a really strong runner um like I was kind of at honestly I was in my kind of physical peak I was at my fitness peak um this time last year when I was working up to running a 10k I think I ran the 10k around this time last year um but since then it's been very much downhill and what I started doing was I have a particular walk that I do that I was doing every morning as part of my morning routine and it's quite short it's uh just over two kilometers maybe two and a half kilometers so that's a kind of a 25 minute walk or less uh and I just got up one day and I thought you know it, I think it was the morning after I had that I was lying at, at night awake at night kind of thinking I need to take control of my life I need to start work tomorrow at 10 a.m and I need to do you know I need to get these things done I need to kind of get serious about things um, and I just got up the next day and was like okay I'm gonna go on a run but I'm just, I'm just gonna do that little round that I do in the morning and it just was more manageable it just didn't seem overwhelming it didn't tire me out I felt like I could have kept running and running and running but I didn't I just did my kind of two two and a half kilometers run and stopped and it's very little it's very very little for somebody who has run 10ks in the past but you know what it's better than nothing honestly it's hugely better than nothing and if I if that's what I need to do if I need to do that three times a week solidly for a while in order to get myself into a really solid routine of running again then so be it I'm happy to do that and honestly that's what I'm most concerned with at this point right now in terms of my lifestyle and my productivity it's with feeling good um I don't want to be doing things just because on paper it looks like a good amount of time to be spending on any one task I don't want to be kind of forcing myself into what an idealized kind of idea of uh, how many work hours I want to be doing or how many hours I want to be spending running every week uh, instead I want to pay attention to how I feel physically and mentally after doing this after spending four hours a day working on specific tasks after doing a 2.5k run three times in the last week and I have been doing this for a week now I think I've done six five or six days maybe not quite maybe four or five days so far of my four hour days with a break uh, on Sunday and um, I have done three of these short manageable not super hard not super fast runs and I'm feeling really really good I'm feeling much better mentally and physically than I have in a really long time I'm feeling um, clearer and I'm just more focused and more optimistic and that's what I'm running with right now um something to mention is that this has not included doing any work on my novel which I really haven't touched in a year I mean I read it I, I work through it and read it and familiarize myself with it every now and then but I haven't done any real writing in a year and at the moment I'm feeling okay about that. I'm kind of realizing that it works really well for me to have just those two simple main tasks in my diary for every week. Now, I do have other things that I, I get done every week. Uh, the main thing being um, the YouTube video. So I definitely have that in mind every week that I need to have that video shot and edited by Tuesday night so that I can get it uploaded in time for Wednesday. And that helps to structure my week as well, honestly. Like that really, I really like having a weekly deadline like that. It kind of works for me mentally, kind of keeps me on task. But in terms of having a project that I need to be kind of doing repeated work on and coming back to again and again, I have found that two main tasks in my life is perfect for me. I feel like I work really well with having two things to be switching back and forth from. Um, usually a main thing and then a kind of more side thing or an easier thing that I can be doing that, or a more enjoyable thing that I can be doing that will break up the kind of the more boring or more difficult task. But any more than that and I just find that I get totally overwhelmed and I just kind of don't keep everything up. I don't keep all the balls in the air and I start to feel overwhelmed and then I drop all of them. Um, I've talked about this with my friend before 
uh, who is, she's been running for oh, 16 years or more, 17 years maybe, and we both have talked to each other about how we struggle and fail to keep up three different forms of exercise. So both of us really want to have a dedicated practice of running, yoga and uh, strength training of some kind. And we both just find that we can't manage it. We can do two, we can do two easily, like no problem, we can maintain like yoga and running, but as soon as we throw strength training into the mix, one of those things disappears. And I find it's the same with my work. Like if I'm working on a PhD and also working on, you know, the website or building up uh, business ideas or creating some kind of product or thinking about what kind of service I can offer, if I'm doing those two things in my week, if I throw in uh, the novel, one of them stops. Like either I'll realize I haven't done anything on my PhD in a month, or I'll realise I haven't make any, made any progress on the website. Um, I don't know if this is unique to me and my friend, um, or if this is kind of a universal thing, but it's worth thinking about. And it's made me realise that A, thinking about my time in terms of the month is actually really important. And that's something that I am, I'm trying to get back into the habit of paper planning. And I really want to focus on um, planning my day to an extent, but also really planning out my month and really um, reminding myself of all the different tasks that need to be done. It's a helpful way for me to think about my YouTube videos because I often record more than one at a time. So if I have a monthly plan, I can plan out the four or five videos that I'm going to make that month, when I'm going to shoot them, when I'm going to edit them. I can plan out my newsletter. I can plan out what progress I want to make on my PhD. I can plan out what I hope to get done with my website. I can plan out, you know, all of these different tasks and maybe even hopefully a little bit of work on my novel at some point. Even if I just have an idea of what I need to next look at with my novel, if I find kind of um, an hour here or there when I just feel like looking at it, then I know kind of what, where to go, what to look at, what to be thinking about or what to be writing. But because I work best, apparently, with two kind of main tasks at hand at once, I feel like I really also need to start thinking seriously, seriously about planning my year. Um, this is something that I've done kind of automatically for a long time, like instinctively, especially after starting the PhD or even from starting the master's, I learned to kind of think ahead to the month ahead and plan in sort of trips to Ireland when I was living in Edinburgh and plan in various different things. Like say if I had a conference coming up at a certain point, I would know that I wouldn't get a lot of PhD done work done around the time that I had to write that paper, for example. Um, or if I had a journal article that I had a deadline for, you know, that was another month that maybe needed to be kind of written off in terms of the PhD. And, and then I would kind of build in PhD goals in alternate months to those times, if that makes sense. And that's something that again, I think I need to get more serious about in terms of paper planning. And um, that maybe I need to have a month or two months, the month blocks where I focus on a particular task and then take a break from that and move on to something else. Because that for me anyway, tends to be a really good way for me to work. The common wisdom when it comes to writing is to write every single day. Like if you wanna be a writer of every, any kind, People will constantly tell you to write every single day, to have a sacrosanct time every single day when you sit down and you put words on a page. I'm not necessarily going to argue with that and I think if that works for you, great, do it. Um, I have never been that kind of writer and I don't necessarily feel like my writing has suffered for it. I have never been a PhD student who's written every day. I've never been a novelist or a fiction writer who's written every single day, um, or very, very rarely in my life have I had that um, opportunity. Instead, I'm a PhD student who will write every single day for a month or two at a time and will produce huge amounts of words in that time. I'm a novelist who will, again, for an entire month, write every single day and blast out a first draft of a novel or, you know, do some serious editing of that needs to be done. I'm definitely more of a person who works in bursts. And I really think that if that works for you, then maybe that's something that you should try too, because it has been, it has worked out pretty positively for me. But it just means that I, like I say, I think not only do I need to plan my time in terms of monthly kind of tasks, but I really need to think about the, the look and feel of the year as well. And I need to plan ahead to when am I gonna work on the, on the novel? Because if I'm realistically not gonna fit it into my kind of week uh, or my month even, then I need to, if I'm serious about getting a novel finished, if I'm serious about getting a project underway, then I need to look at my year and say, okay, when can I afford to take, 
you know, take the foot off the paddle with the PhD and with other stuff. Like, when can I afford to kind of really just mostly focus on this for a month or two at a time? And that's when I'll make that progress. So yeah, I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, I made a video recently about my morning routine, so I didn't go into too much detail about that. It's still the same. I'm still just doing yoga and meditation and um, doing some form of exercise, whether it's a walk or a run. Uh, but yeah, I hope that this has been helpful if any of you also struggle with energy, with productivity, um, with structuring your day or your week or your month or your year. Um, I don't know, I know some of us are all in this journey together and um, I'm gonna continue to make these videos as I progress. I will let you know if I manage to stick to this current plan and I will also let you know how I get on with the paper planning if I, if I ever manage to get back into that. If any of you have any suggestions for inspiration for a paper planner like me, somebody who um, is very resistant to planning in general, um, please let me know because I find that all of the bullet, bullet journaling videos that I find are people who are really excited about planning and who have no problem sitting down with their bullet journal every day or at the, at the very least once a week, that they actually look forward to it and it's something that kind of comes to them organically. I'm not that person. Um, I, I really resist planning. I really resist looking at everything that needs to get done in a week and facing up to all the things that I haven't managed to get done. Um, so if any of you are also like that and if you have any tips or if you've come across a YouTuber or a blogger or somebody who talks about planning who also has kind of resistance to it, um, yeah, please let me know because it would be really helpful to me to um, find some first kind of hand experience on just managing to battle your way into paper planning even when it's not something that comes naturally to you. Um, digital planning to me, like I can plan digitally as in I use a digital calendar for my meetings and appointments and things and that's the only way that I can kind of structure my life um, and I that's fine, that works, it gets me there on time but I find that that in terms of like to-do lists and planning my week and planning my month I find digital planning totally uninspiring. I'm much more inspired by paper planning. So yeah, um, any thoughts, any tips, do let me know. Thanks for watching as always and I'll talk to you again soon.